Hi, this is Ingvar Evanesson, Fita Master from Iceland and in this video we are going to look at the way Magnus Carlsen won the World Blitz Championship. We're going to look at all his game, how he progressed in the tournament and let's just dive right into it. And we're going to start with the now famous first round game against Ernesto Inarkiev. And well, before we get to uh, the meat and bones, uh, already the opening was quite interesting when Carlsen employed uh, this A3 line, which sacrifices a pawn after knight c6, which Inarkiev took. So Carlsen played this interesting gambit and already showing that he was ready to play much different openings in the blitz section than in the rapid and certainly in classical chess. And I made a video on this game, which I'll link to, where you can find more detailed explanations. But after the opening, Cousin was doing quite well, already threatening with a 4 kilo on g7, and he won back his pawn and had a nice initiative. Um, he, however, faltered a bit in uh, realizing that advantage, but then he got back on the right track and was actually on his way to winning. Let's see the moves here. We're in the late middle game. When after knight d5, he took on c6, and now he's close to winning after bishop b5. And after king b6, he played the winning move. Rook takes e7, uh, b7, and here is where things went mad. If the king takes or the rook takes on b7, as the arrows highlight, bishop will take on b5, discover check, and then the f7 pawn will hang, and the ending should be winning, close to winning, if not totally winning for Carlsen. But here, Inarchia famously played this knight to e3, which is an illegal move, and after Carlsen played king d3, forgetting that he had placed his opponent to check, Inarchia claimed a win, claiming that Carlsen had played an illegal move. However, Carlsen's move, king d3, is not illegal. It doesn't produce an illegal position like uh, Inarchiev's move did. And first, the win was awarded to Inarchiev, but later, after some confusion, finally the correct decision was made and they were ordered to continue to play from the legal position after king d3, but Inarchiev refused to do that so he had to forfeit the game and his appeal was was not met. So Carlsen won this game and justifiably so. In his second round game, Carlsen played against Shannon Shugirov and after surviving a somewhat difficult opening, Carlsen had actually found himself in a nice position with the bishop pair. I'm just uh, on the verge of turning things around and here moves like e takes f4 or rook takes d3 would guarantee a fight where uh, Carlsen would be sure to make something happen with his bishop pair. Instead, we saw a bad blunder from Carlsen and perhaps he hadn't uh, sort of regained his composure from the first round incident. And he played bishop d4 and this immediately loses and often disaster strikes on the most defended square and here Carlsen simply loses a piece. Shugirov played f5, and this is just resignable. Can't move this bishop. And taking on f5 doesn't help because bishop takes f5, queen takes h5, as happened in the game, comes with check, and then white simply captures on f5. And to make matters worse, white has excellent dominations on, on uh, domination on the light squares. Can put a knight on e4. The bishop will be strong either here or on this diagonal. And okay, Carlsen fought on, but this is completely losing, and he lost his second round game. In the third round, it was important for Carlsen to bounce back immediately. He had the white pieces against Ukrainian Yuri Krivorutsko. And here, Carlsen had played the London system, and he stands. He stands better here. Black has a bad king position and uncoordinated pieces because of the rook here on h8. So Carlsen has some initiative. 
and he could keep his advantage with either king b1 knight a3 but he played g4 which looks aggressive but allows black to escape after bishop takes f2 cousin took on c6 and probably he missed here after he plays g5 that Krivorutsko can play bishop g3 and this check on f4 is more or less saving black he has the bishop here and the pawns eventually should be around equal so all still still a lot to play for and pieces on the board so impossible to say what, what would have happened but bishop g3 would have made things very difficult for Carlsen instead Krivorutsko played queen f4 check which is a huge blunder the king goes to b1 and now you can't defend against rook d8 check and uh, g takes f6 so just a horrible blunder here uh, so Carlsen was happy to escape here with an easy win Krivorutsko took on c4 but after g takes on f6 made this simply avoidable unavoidable and Krivorutsko resigned so a nice bounce back from Carlsen in round three so now on two points out of three in the fourth round Carlsen faced the Spanish number one David Anton Giaro and we had the double fianchetto in the opening from Carlsen and here we have a position which uh, re resembles something out of a uh, declined uh, banquet capit or something like that and chances should be about balanced it's it's uh yeah it's popular just to say dynamically equal when you're not completely sure what's going on both sides have chances and here uh david had the white pieces so let's actually turn it around because carlson is black and he's our our hero of the video and here white went for um a seemingly uh, classical breakthrough. I mean, usually the the plan for white here is e5, and that is what uh, David played. But this uh, allows black's pieces to to break out. It makes sense of the rook on on d8, and as you will see, Carlson took on e5, and now knight to e5. Uh, e4 was played. It seems more logical to play f5, and such. Pawn sacrifices are well known since the famous game Penrose against Tal, where Tal sensationally lost against an idea like this in the uh, Benoni defense. But David Anton goes for knight e4, which was not as good, and now all of a sudden Carlsen is just act attacking everything. c for pawn is attacked, and this is pinned. So disaster is striking, rook b to c1 for attacking the pawn, but now. Carlson took an a3 and now on d5. So he wins a pawn here. And after taking here and knight d3, it's just disaster for white. Carlson has two extra pawns at the moment and now he's doubling on the second rank. And this should be game over. But David managed to squirm a little bit. Let's just see it for. Uh, see what happened he took on e3 and started pushing his c pawn rook f2 queen d5 and here i mean why not just take on h2 but carlson was more reserved in his approach he uh, decided to stop the c pawn probably a practical decision queen g6 controlling the c pawn well the question is can we queen the pawn and use the x-ray and the answer to that is no we can't because of rook to g2 which uh, simply mates if you take it and queen takes uh, if the king moves to f1 then rook here and finally if you go to uh, h1 there's rook takes h2 and rook h1 mate so nice tactic by Carlsen and instead David took on c2 rook takes and Carlsen went to the end game and that was enough he wins the pawn on a3 so perhaps not the most convincing way to win but probably the safest uh david can actually attack the pawn but there's bishop c5 check in that case and then we push the pawn 
and completely winning position for black with three extra pawns. So three out of four, we're gaining some, some traction and moving on to round number five. Well, the fifth round game was against Varushan Kopian from the United States and I've covered that game on my channel. And Carlson played the London system, which he played in quite a few games in this tournament and, and in recent tournaments as well. And I've highlighted more or less what the London system is here with these arrows and circles. I, li I like to draw, yes. But the uh, most important part of this game happened after knight e3. Kopian correctly played knight d5. And here was the critical moment. Carlson took on a6. And here he survived a scare. Kopian could have won immediately with rook takes a6. Now this didn't happen in the game, but if it takes, then bishop to c4 traps the queen. And Carlson would, ha would have had to resign. Instead, the Kopian took on f3, and let's quickly see some moves. The bishop went back. Carlson had the bishop pair. He made a passed pawn on the queen side, and there was little that a Kopian could do to prevent that. We had a trade there, and then the a pawn was pushed to a7. And then a nice little tactic to finish things off, queen takes c8, and a copian resigned. So, so far things were going quite well, 4 out of 5 for the world champion, and well in contention. In the 6th round, uh, Carlsen had black against Oleksandr Bortnik from Ukraine, which I believe is uh, it's a, it's a blitz expert of some sort. And Carlson had the black pieces, and, and the opening was was uh, a bit interesting because, like in the rapid, Carlson went for this knight c6 opening, the Nimsovich, which he used on on several occasions in this tournament, and he always played it with d6, so sort of a delayed perk defense in a way. So after d4, he he played knight f6, and then he allowed this. Provoca provocate the move d5 eventually, similar to what happened in his game against uh, Anand. Rookie one, c6, and nothing much happened. We'll, we'll just quickly go over the moves without comment. Um, b4 was played, and here Carlsen got in this knight c4 move where. Uh, yeah, the square is quite weak and white has to give up the bishop pair he can only choose which one and here Carlsen is already slightly better he can uh, maneuver his knight to to the e5 square and then c4 if he needs and he has pressure on this on the c file and in typical Carlsen fashion he kept a slight edge and eventually Although white is very close to, to equalizing, uh, it's actually a bit more unpleasant for white. And here Carlson gets the pawn on c2. And eventually here's a double attack on f2 and d5. So watching this game live, I thought this would be smooth sailing for Carlson. He's up a pawn. And okay, even though there are some technical problems, usually he's able to overcome them. Here he attacks b6, but now the queen is attacked, and he moves into this, you know, potential discovery, but there's no real discovery with, with the knight, so for now it's okay, after rook d8, uh, Bortnik got the pawn on, on uh, a5, but knight c5 was played, and now Kals gets a pawn on d5, so he's still up a pawn. Should be better, and all bets are on Carlson here. But then uh, something happened. He took on a4, and after rook to f2, he 
he overlooked uh, Portnik's response here. Portnik played. <laughs> Excuse me, Queen to F4. Yeah, it was such a move that uh, it didn't induce a sneeze. And it must have induced a reaction uh, for Carlson because this is a very dangerous double attack. And you can't allow White to take on f7 as we'll demonstrate queen takes f7 there's queen f6 check we take the rook on d8 to check and then we give mate on f8 can't allow this so Carlsen had to uh, give up the piece but fortunately, fortunately for him he got the b pawn and okay this is better for, for white big advantage but Carlsen showed tremendous defensive skills he went for the end game and we're here on move 53 and he managed to hold on here uh, eventually Portnik pushed his G pawn he has only one pawn left so Carlson's goal here is to get this pawn and he managed to do that he combined you know any, anytime he put the king on g7 he's threatening f6 to to exchange the pawn and he combined that with an attack on the knight and some uh, behind uh, vertical checks from behind putting the rook on, on the first rank often like uh, we'll see here then giving some checks here attacking the pawn and Botnik was unable to find a plan to uh, push forward and eventually Carlson managed to play in this position after giving up his B pawn he managed to play F6 liquidate the last pawn and then it's a very easy draw even without this pawn one of the most easiest draws in such endgames no. so a slight accident in that it looked like a typical Carson game but then he blundered and in the end had to use all his defensive resources to save a draw but these saves add up they uh, in the end they count and let's move on to the next round in the seventh round it was uh, the Chinese player Wang Hao uh, I believe he is the, uh, the Chinese number two Ding Liren is number one I might be mistaken about that one but he's one of the top Chinese players and again Carlsen employed the London system and had a slightly better position but couldn't make anything of it and here we sort of uh, enter the critical stage of the game where Carlsen is able to play the move f5 here and for black to take is very dangerous because the queen will enter with check on g5 and Carlsen's pieces come to life so Wang Hao went with his bishop to c8 and here well Carlsen must do something uh, well at least some <laughs> something uh, different from what he did in the game uh, maybe take on g6 and it's just an equal position I would prefer prefer white because um, I feel like the bishop doesn't have a lot of prospects and it's more fun to play around with a knight you can you can you know maybe move the king and make a blockade on c3 and you know there are some weakness on the on the dark squares but it, it's just a matter of taste I think but what happened was Carson played queen h6 and this is the third straight game where he blunders and Wang Hao took advantage of this he took with the bishop on f5 and because of the pin on the rook the pawn can't take on f5 so Carson just loses a pawn but like in the sixth round well in the fifth round he escaped against the Copian but in the sixth round he had to use all his defensive uh, forces to save the draw but here it's really difficult he's down a pawn and now with with this pawn gone this this piece becomes much better and black should just win here but can Carlsen mount a defense here well he does have the knight and okay he managed to make a blockade here but uh, we have a rook exchange and now a nice king on e5 Carlsen decides to dislodge the king, knight f3 check, 
and at least he gets a good, good king himself. Still, this looks very promising for black. Uh, Bang Hao goes for the logical plan to make a passed pawn on the queen side. He, after all, has an extra pawn. Now, cousin turns this pawn, and now he's close to equalizing. But he still needs very much to uh, use all his forces to uh, to draw this. All his powers, king e5. Now you have to be careful, this king is coming in. So you have to spend the move here on g3. And Wang Hao played well here, f5. Still is tricky. If you take with a pawn, which he didn't do. Then maybe if the king takes f5, it's hard to deal with uh, the king penetrating, and you have to uh, be really careful. Cousin played knight f3. And this seems like a good defensive idea, because after king takes, he has knight g5 check. And you have to defend the bishop, so king here. And now the king has time to come, so he sacrifices the pawn. And now he's one move away from making a blockade here with knight to f4. And I thought he should play maybe knight h3 here. Can he do that? Knight h3 with the idea to come here. That might be possible. And you put, put the king on e3, you play knight f4, and you go back and forth. Should be a draw. But after bishop d5, Carlsen played... Uh, King to e3, well, yeah, it's also it's logical, but it, it does allow an interesting try for black. Here Wang Hao played f4, and, I mean, you can take, but then you allow the king to come in, and uh, you're risking some things. Uh, cousin didn't fancy that, and he went for king f2, which is another nice move, because it's much easier to hold the fortress, exchanging uh, the pawns, king f5. And now, once again, it's tricky, because the king wants to come here. But Carlsen finds the solution, knight h3, attacking the pawn. And after you take on g3, it's a dead draw. Um, the question is, can black play pawn to f3? And the answer is more or less no. You can't really make any progress here. The king is covering everything, and everything is on black squares. So white should be able to rock back and forth. Depending on where the bishop is, we should always have a square for the knight to uh, to jump to. So Wang Hao took an F on G3, and this was agreed drawn as, as nothing to be done here. Like in the previous example, the knight will simply jump back and forth from G5, and uh, two squares again, that can access g5, and it will be a draw. So another nice save from Carlsen. So now he is uh, down two points with five out of seven. So here we see how things stood after these seven rounds. Maxim Vasilar Graf and Sergei Karakin started off with a bang with six out of seven. We have the youngster Andrei Esipenko, he was on five and a half with a ton of other players, and uh, Carlsen in joint 11th with five points. So we'll have a look at the standings after uh, after a few rounds, uh, you know, between a few rounds, and uh, we'll move on to the eighth round. In the eighth round, uh, Magnus met his his rival, but good friend Vishy Anand. Um, of course, they debated two world championship matches, which Carlsen won. He won the title from Anand and then defended it. And in this game, he used the Knight c6 opening, the Nimsovich, and went for the perk setup. And this game is, is covered on my channel, so we'll just go quickly through uh, the key moments here. Uh, Anand had, you know, stood firm, he has a solid position, and here Carlson gave up the pawn on e7 for some play. His rook managed to penetrate, but it seemed like Anand was holding on. Uh, there was this rook check, and it seemed like he was holding on to the pawn. But Carlsen found enough play here with the idea of playing a5 and bishop a6. And this managed, uh, enabled him to win back the pawn here on b2. 
and after a time scramble, uh, Gazan had attacked his pawn. And then the uh, key moment was here when Anand almost took the pawn on h4. And I already outlined in my video what happens there. If king takes on h4, there's not knight takes d2, but rook takes e3, followed by this. Winning the game. Anand avoided this, played king h4 in the nick of time. And then after uh, f5, he played a4 with about a half a second left on his clock, just survived. And after this exchange here, a dead rook ending and a draw was agreed between the, these two massive titans of the game. So moving on to round number nine. Here is where things started to happen in Carlsen's game against Sergei Grigoriads, a Russian grandmaster, in the ninth round. And here it looks like Carlsen might be winning a pawn, which he is, but I don't know if it was planned, but Grigoriads found a very nice way to stay in the game and actually take over the game. After queen d5, Carlsen actually has to find the very pre precise move, queen to b4, to cover the h4 square. But he played b4, protecting the knight, and he seemingly has an extra pawn. But now, some nice moves by Grigorian. He plays knight h4, threatening mate on g2, f3 for Carlsen, and now queen to g5. And it's very hard to deal with the mate threat, the, the pin on the g2 pawn, and in some cases the attack on the e3 pawn. So Carlsen decided to give up this pawn on f3, he played rook a2, knight takes f3, king h1. And this is actually a bad blunder, he, he had to go to f1. And here again Carlsen escaped from the jaws of defeat. He could have lost against the Kobian, and here Grigorians could have played queen g3, threatening mate, and this is simply winning for black. The only way to prevent mate is to take, but now the rook threatens to penetrate on the d-file, and as you see an example of uh, an attempt at the defense, rook a1 covering the first rank, still covering d2, but then there's queen takes f3. If you put the king on the second, I play queen f2 check, and then the rook arrives, and Carlson would have to give up his queen. And if you go the other way to g1, rook d6, and again, Carlson would have, have to give up his queen. Fortunately for Carlson, his opponent did not find queen g3 and played knight to e5. Black was still better here because of the better pawn structure, but now he's much better because Carlson blundered again. And again, he escaped by the skin of his teeth. Um, knight f3 was a nice move here. If he takes, which he didn't, then we get jacks and we pick up the rook. And black is close to winning. Well, he's just winning with a bad king. So Carlsen got lucky that he had king g3. And again, his opponent could have won with knight to g1. And with the threat of knight d2, coupled with some mating ideas, let's say uh, the queen moves out of the way, there's knight e2 check, and you can't go back because of the mate, and if you move in the other direction, uh, it's actually not, not much better, you get mated, so Carlson would have to give up material here, but he got lucky again, because his opponent didn't find it, he played knight g5, and from there, Carlson managed to get into an endgame where he's down a pawn, but he found this knight e7 move. Now he's threatening mate, and his opponent took the perpetual here, and a draw for Carlson. So let's take a look at the standings after these nine rounds. With Carlson making two draws, he has fallen a bit behind the leaders, he is still in joint 10th uh, now, which 
it's not far of leaders, but he's one and a half point behind Maxim Vasilar Grava and Sergei Karakin, who are keeping up with the pace. And now Peter Switler with seven as well, and some strong players with six and a half. In the tenth round, Carlson played against Hrantnal Kumian from Armenia. He had the black pieces, and Hrant went with the exchange Slav, which is, well, considered somewhat drawish at times and Carlson had some problems uh, creating play but eventually he did and one was on his way to outplay Rant in uh, the middle slash end game but then we have this position and now White is at least equaling the position he plays rook b7 he's threatening a pin here well he has a pin he's threatening to utilize the pin with bishop d6 and the only way to get out of this is to move the king, but now Frank starts checking. And Carlsen interposes the rook. Frank plays rook d5. And Carlsen goes rook to c3. And now I don't know what Carlsen would have done after rook b8 again um, when White gets a draw. But it seems like Frank wanted more, and it looks like he was even playing for a win with rook takes d5. But in return, he's going to lose the a3 pawn. Carson took on a3. And that's a very dangerous uh, a pawn. It should be through check. And now he got some play on the second rank. So it's getting a little bit uncomfortable for, for White now. He played d6, a3. And it's harder for White to move this pass pawn forward because the bishop is covering a7. So how do he push the pawn? He played rook a8 check. Also, this rook must keep an eye on the a pawn. Uh, rook back to a6 and now rook f2 by Carlsen the pawn gets to a2 so now it's getting the interest for white he played rook a3 bishop to c5 and eventually yeah Carlsen realized he can transpose here to a, a bishop end game the rooks come off and now he simply takes on d6 and puts the bishop on e5 and he has a winning pawn ending this is much faster than whatever this guy has to do and black will win so once again Carlson managed to, to use uh, his superior endgame skills to defeat his opponent and well sometimes save draws but in this case to uh, win the game so on to round 11 11 and the end of day one <coughs> and Magnus had the white pieces and he was playing against Yu Yang Yi from China. A very strong blitz player. And Carlson opened with e4. And I thought the opening, we should you know, have a look at that because it was interesting. He played the Vienna and he played f4. And this is closely resembles, of course, the, the King's Gambit. So people like when, when the modern masters play like this. Bishop b4, knight d5. And Carlsen managed to get a very good position. He got <coughs> a nice pawn structure in the center. And after the liquidation here in the center and castles, I mean, White has a has a has an extra central pawn. Well, not an extra, the only central pawn, and that gives him, you know, certain certain flexibility, uh, space advantage, and other things. He's restricting black's pieces <coughs> and white has more concentration of uh, forces on the king side so i think white has an edge here but somewhere uh, Carlson didn't manage to find uh, the best way forward and little by little and especially after black, man black managed to break with c5 the position is now Adding towards equality, and perhaps after this, black is for choice. Uh, Yu Yangyi played quite well here, and this uh, h6 and king h7. I want you to pay attention to this. If you want to learn something about chess, I will link to it uh, in one of my pattern recognition videos. I'll talk about a pattern called Anand King. And there, okay, the white pawn was on g5 and the black pawn on h5. 
but it's very similar. The black king is completely safe. White has almost no way to attack the king. So in the battle of the heavy pieces, black is the favorite here. He just has to or organize an attack and white will have very little counterplay because of black's extremely safe king. Rook f3 and white is going to pay for his exposed king. I mean, white might be able to hold this, but it, it's very difficult for white. And in a blitz game, it, it's just torture to to hold such a position. And now that Yu Yang Yi has got the e-file, uh, the pressure is mounting. He's threatening to check and then coming back to, to e2 to win the queen. Carlson managed to hold him up for now. But after this, he tried rook d8, tactical means. But after queen e4, the threat is rook f3. Queen g2, rook e1, Carlsen resigned. So, the worst way to end day one with a loss. And Carlsen now on 7 out of 11. Let's have a look at the standings after day one. Well, as you can see, after 11 rounds, Carlsen doesn't fit on my screen. After day one, Carlsen had 7 out of 11, and he was in 20th place, right below Amin Basim here, if we scroll down. Carlsen in 20th place, the first seat, with 7 points. At the top of the standings, still Karakin and Vasila Graf. Karakin with 9 points, Vasila Graf with 8.5. So Carlsen needed to overcome a 2 point lead by Karakin, who was in prime form on day one scoring nine out of eleven and well some people didn't believe this was possible but we'll see well as you can see from this tweet from uh, a well-known Norwegian journalist he didn't believe that Carlsen could win uh, went as far as to say that he was out of contention but you know Carlsen we know what kind of scores he can rack up but he would have to get like eight and a half or nine and the other guys, I mean, six and a half, seven, could still be enough for them. So, not looking good. And to make matters worse, Carlsen was facing the man who ruined uh, the rapid tournament for him. Uh, Carlsen was leading in the rapid, but lost in the last round against Krishuk, when even a draw could have, uh, might have advanced him to at least a tiebreak match. So, to make yeah, matters further bad, he had the black pieces, so he had to find some energy to rejuvenate himself and this was a very important game to start the day. And here is where things started to get interesting. Uh, we had the Queen's Gambit declined, quiet opening, and then Grishuk pushed in the center with e4 and Carlsen answered energetically with e5. And after a mass exchange in the center, Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, d takes e4, bishop takes e4, and knight takes on e5. The situation has clarified a bit. Temporarily, uh, white is up a pawn, but black regains it now. But uh, the main problem for white is that his pawns here seem quite weak, and Carlsen loves to get a better pawn structure, and he took advantage of it immediately. He uh, decided to take uh, go for the pawn here uh, before finishing the element. Queen e7, he wants this pawn here. After f4, he took it with jack and with rook, rook went back to, back to e7. Looks like black might have some problems because he hasn't finished development. But after a few more moves, queen c2, g6 because of the threat of this pawn. h3. Bishop to d7, now the rook is coming over and Carlsen has no problems, he's simply up a pawn he's virtually winning, offers the queen trade uh, Krishuk denies, but now Carlsen gets another pawn and after rook e1 check, the queen gets back everything is in order and Carlsen won a very important game in the 13th round, it was time for India's number 2 Pantala Hare Krishna Carlson is white, and well, he didn't get much uh, after the opening. Uh, it was uh, a Catalan. 
And this sort of reminds me of what he had against uh, Wang Hao. This knight against this bishop, but this knight blockading against Wang Hao, he lost the pawn. But here, he has everything more or less under control. <coughs> and the black square blockade is actually quite nice. Black can't really do anything. White is the only one that can win, but is this enough to win? We'll see. Carlsen sacrificed his pawn and then penetrated with his rook. Here, Hare Krishna went rook d4. He simply gave up this h7 pawn. Uh, surprisingly, the computer thinks rook d4 is the best move because now at least black gets an active rook. But on the other hand, why this up a pawn? It, it is a double pawn, and I'm not sure what the evaluation of this ending is, but uh, Carlsen had a bit of good fortune here after bishop d3 and king to f4. Hare Krishna made things quite easy for him when he played king d6, a horrible blunder. And after rook to d5 check, Carlsen will simply pick up the bishop, protect his own knight in the meantime, and have an easily winning position. So. Hare Krishna resigned. So, two nice wins for Carlsen to begin day two. And now, with everybody on the top board making draws, this mess meant that in only two rounds, Magnus had gained ground. Uh, he's up to joint fifth place and now only one point behind the leader, Sergei Karagin. So, things are getting interesting already. Let's keep going. Round number 14. Well, Nobody said this was going to be easy, and in the 14th round, uh, Carlson had to face Shach Mamadiarov from Azerbaijan, one of the informed players of 2017. Carlson had the black pieces, and uh, he had been saddled with an isolated queen pawn. And here is sort of the critical moment of the game. Carlson managed to equalize here by playing d4, getting rid of the as the pawn, it looks like white has a threat here on the b7 pawn, but knight takes d4 defense tactically. If white were to take on b7, he's going to lose instantly because of the knight fork on e2. So this allowed Carlsen to liquidate into a heavy piece ending, and this should just be a draw, you know, every time. Um, we can say why this slightly better. I mean, he has further advanced pawns on the queen side. He can perhaps get some uh, pressure there. He can get the default immediately. And his formation on the king side is sort of more advanced with more space. But this is a really, really, really tiny edge, if we can even call it an edge. And I think in a classical match, they would just shake hands here. But. They played on here, and well, maybe Shaq is trying something. It should be a fairly safe, uh, safe position to play on for a win. You know, just to annoy your opponent a little bit. Queen d7. Now, Black can't take here because White will get the active rook in the end game. So rook e7. Now, if you take, then everything is defended. So the queen goes back. Carlsen offers uh, repetition. Carlsen offers a queen trade, and we have queen e4 check, and rook e5. And perhaps it was time for Shaq to bail out here. I mean, there's nothing going on. And actually, it is uh, Black who is taking over the initiative a little bit here, although he's not really doing anything. a4, rook e4, at least threatening the pawn. And yeah. So Shaq has made this a, a little bit un uncomfortable all of a sudden. He plays queen d8, and here he played queen to d5. And this is a horrible blunder, which gives Magnus, uh, well, the full point in the game, but we can say he gets an extra half a point, you know, as a Christmas bonus here. So what will Black play? Yes, obviously he will play, correct, rook e1 check resigns rook takes the queen drops king h2 well we have a plotting choice we can play rook h1 and then take the queen 
but it's even simpler to take on f2 and if king h1 queen f1 check and then we can uh, keep checkmate here rook e2 game set match magnus carlsen fantastic win and this sets up a titanic clash in round 15 so it was carlsen with white against Karagin in round number 15. What a matchup. And this game I already covered on the channel, so we'll go quickly over it and you can check it out in further detail there. And well, here basically is where Carlson started to mount an assault on the king, rook h4, and reminding Karagin on which square he got <laughs> served in the last World Championship match on h6. Everybody remembers queen h6. And here he sort of reminds him, uh, I want to do some funky business on h6. f6 was played, queen g6. And Karakin could have fought on with bishop f7, but at the queen g6, it's already really difficult because of the threats on h6. Um, he played knight b4, but bishop h7, uh, sorry, king h7, excuse me, already allows some violence, such as bishop takes h6. Followed by knight g5 check and rook takes f7. Or just knight g5 immediately. And after knight b4, Carlson entered black's position, bishop takes h6. Carrigan took on c2. And now just too many pieces. Look at all the pieces attacking, and this can only end one way. Karagin took on e5, you can check my video, but uh, if he moves the queen, knight g6, and yeah, basically, after, after this, it's going to end in mate or losing the queen, so he gave up the queen immediately with this, but Carlsen moved his remaining forces with devastating effect towards the black king, and with mate imminent, Karakin resigned. So, unbelievable, he has caught up after, what, four rounds? Let's check it out. So, unbelievably, after only four rounds, he started two points behind the leaders. But after only four rounds, he was the sole leader on day two. So after a total of 15 rounds, Carlsen has 11 points, followed by six players on 10 and a half. So, a lot of hard work done, but still, a lot of challenging games to left to finish on the way to the title. Let's see what happened. In the 16th round, uh, well, it still doesn't get easier. Magnus played against MVL, Maxim Vasier Lagraf. He had white pieces, but he didn't make any headway in the English opening. And here, actually, we can say that MVL is slightly better. So Magnus went for mass trades here, which uh, MVL accepted. And then, you know, we'll, we'll quickly, quickly play through the moves. Nothing really happened in this game. He took on c4, and now there's, well, no entry to be had for either side. And a draw was agreed. So a rather uneventful game. And we will move to round number 17. And round 17 was anything but uneventful. Here, Carlson had black against Tikran El Petrosian the namesake of the ninth world champion. And here is where things started to heat up. Carlsen played h6, and this allowed white a peace sacrifice. Although he chose the wrong one, he should have taken on f7, followed by knight takes d6. And here the natural move is to move the rook, but now white is starting to, to capture stuff. And at the worst case, he can get two pawns for uh, two, rook and two pawns for two knights. But he took on d6 immediately and got a lot of pawns here, knight takes c5. But Carlsen kept good control. He played g4, preventing any expansion on the king side. And here he wants to put something on e6. Managed to do that, exchange off this nice looking knight. Now bishop e6. So 
for White to get any compensation, he must push these pawns. But Carlsen does a good job of sort of keeping them in check. There's nothing dangerous yet. Now the pawns come. But now here, bishop c4. Keeping everything in check. Blockade. And to relieve this blockade, Petrosan felt he had to exchange this light squared bishop. But this weakened this king side, which was very important as we'll see. And here Carlsen is already taking over. He was threatening to take on c5. This bishop has to go back. We can't take on c3 because the knight is hanging. So knight f6, hitting e4. And Petrosan went queen b3. If he goes queen to c2, there's already queen to c4. And this pawn is toast. So he just gave it up immediately. And okay, finally he gets the pawns moving, but Carlsen probably gets the right idea. He goes for counterplay on the king side. C5, king g7. And here already, white must be careful. There are evil intentions on the king side. For instance, if you just mindlessly push the pawns, I mean, this is probably not more natural, but look out. And let's say you uh, push. Well, there's rook takes h2 coming. And the idea is simply to give checkmate. And now the queen comes over to f5 and mate is unavoidable. So that was the idea with this bishop f6, king g7 stuff. I think it's better to explain things, you know. So yeah, king g7. And that prompted uh, Petrosian to weaken his king side here. And now knight g5. And now Carlsen uh, still off a piece. White has these two pawns, but Black has his own dangerous pass pawn now. And the play here from here was rather smooth. e3, queen c6. Look how he activates the queen on the center left queen. You now the queen on the center left square is uh, the most active, active outpost. And just simple chess here. a5 breaking through. Giving this guy some some breathing space, and here he annoys, uh, annoys, <laughs> uh, ignores the attack on the uh, bishop. Plays rook a2, and this is fantastic chess. Rook comes to a8, renewing the threat of rook a2, and after e2 resigns. A very nice game by Carlsen. Looked like he was under pressure, but uh, to me, after looking at it afterwards, he more or less had things under control. And this moved him into a great spot. Let's look at the standings. So Carlson still in first, but the draw with MVL allowed Karikin to draw level with him again. So now they're sharing the lead. And meanwhile, meanwhile, Lagrave is half a point behind. And then Dingliren, Anand, and Petrosian one point behind. And with only four rounds to go, you know, anything can happen. You know, a loss. Uh, at this stage, it's very expensive, so need to uh, need to be on your toes. And let's see the next round, round 18. And now round 18. And well, here's the answer to your question: How did Magnus Carlsen become Blitz World Champion? Well, by following Ginger GM advice, Harry. Harry! He pushed Harry the H pawn. This is his game against Ding Liren. He has the black pieces. H5. Anything to weaken up and soften the king. Ding Liren took on B6. He's now up a pawn. But what do you do? Push Harry! Okay, Ding can't really take now because the knight will jump in with devastating effect to either H4 or F4. So Ding tried Queen C6. Now knight to g4. There's a threat on f2, so king has to take. And things should be very much about equal here, but in a blitz game, it's very tricky for white. King played queen c4, and now h3. Pins the king to the first rank. Okay, the queen has to defend here. Now Carlson brings the knight in. And it looks very dangerous, but there's no mate. And with with perfect defense, things should hold here, but it splits and it's the world champion. It's very tricky. Knight f3 check. Here, Carson realized that even though it looks bad, there's no real way forward immediately. 
and white is gonna push this pawn could be very dangerous b5 so we found a nice move knight c4 this can't be taken now because of the back rank so king back to g1 and now cousin took on e3 so here i thought things were you know getting slightly away from him but okay he comes back queen to e6 and most likely white will always have a problem with this king so for white to win here it will be very diff difficult played a4 and now queen to b3 double attack looks like white is losing the pawn he lost, lost the pawn on a4 queen a5 very tricky and after b6 which looked tempting it's a losing move queen d2 threatening mate on g2 and nothing to be done here queen takes e3 queen f2 and now a nice dance queen c1 back to c5 and this b6 pawn is dropping off nothing to be done he played queen e2 and queen takes b6 Carlsen took some further moves but he's two pawns up this is completely winning and the king is pinned down so a nice win in the 18th round for Magnus Carlsen so now Karakin drew in his 18th round so Carlsen is leading with half a point before the 19th round and here he's playing with the white pieces against Vladislav Artemiev who before this tournament was the second ranked blitz player in the world according to the live ratings after a fantastic blitz tournament right before uh, this world championship and well history could have been different here Artemiev missed his chance because this was the only real big blunder of Carlsen's day two Carlsen's play on day two was just so much better he was focused he was his normal self he kept he kept a tie match and kept the pressure on in almost every game but here he slipped after me have, could have taken advantage with rook takes b2 and if the queen takes rook takes c5 and because of this pin black has a virtually winning position two pieces for the rook and this is not the position for the rooks Carlsen would most likely have lost this and who knows history might have been different instead he managed to press for a long time uh, this video is on my channel and the key moment was here Carlsen had been pressing and now there's a pressure on h6 and here Artemir blundered he could have fought on with queen c7 which gives up the h6 pawn but gives black chances for a uh, perpetual instead after knight g5 blocking uh, the queen's path to h6 there was queen c6 and this forced the queen trade and the winning ending for Carlsen there's nothing to be done about this pawn the knight can defend it but then the king is stuck on the h pawn and Carlsen simply walked his king over to the king's side to pick up the pawn and he won so yet another win by Carlsen and let's see the standings after round 19 so after round 19 Carlsen has moved on to a one point lead a whole point and his nearest rival he already beat so this is looking like he can al already seal it in the penultimate round and yeah I mean Karakin what can he do uh, I mean when Magnus Carlsen is winning every game you know running riot running completely riot I mean he can't afford this amount of, of draws and let's see round 20 where Carlsen can seal the deal so penultimate round and it's Carlsen against Koda both with black a very strong Ukrainian and here uh, Carlsen had been doing okay slightly better as, as per usual but here he had uh, committed an inaccuracy and Koda both played king h7 but it's not clear what white has if he had gone queen takes d3 and knight takes d4 simply winning a pawn and well in the process of trying to win that pawn back uh, black shouldn't have any problems I mean maybe white can uh, play knight c8 and after knight c6 uh, play bishop b5 something like that but okay there's knight e7 so we don't win the pawn back immediately having trouble with these arrows kind of getting tired <laughs> after a long video here uh, but this would have been very very difficult to to win but as a king h7 Carlsen doesn't let him off the hook he plays d5 
knight goes back and now a queen trade a culture speciality going for the end game and he's winning a pawn here and once again this should not be enough i mean black has 93 here he's hitting two pawns he's down a pawn but there are so few pawns left and while watching this live i uh, was slightly surprised here that he took on e5 i thought he should take on b2 and then come to uh hang on i'm getting there and then come to c4 so let's see um yeah, he took on e5 but if he takes on b2 you take on a7 knight c4 now have a double attack and you know now it's different if you go for this pawn now i mean i'm already in i, I can play b5 and then take on a3 protect it so black shouldn't have any problems here instead he went for the other pawn and now Carlson has a small nibble because you can play knight c8 and now because you have to take the pawn that's a difference you have to take the pawn on b2 now in the other variation you could take on a3 and protect the b5 pawn now when you play b5 i attack it and now you can't regain your pawn you can take on b2 or take on b5 and now Carlson has an extra pawn and the rule of thumb is that if the pawn ending is winning then the knight ending should be the same and here the distance between the pawns is, is so large that i believe white might be winning here and carlson of course showed exemplary technique and let's see how he secured the world championship title uh with a round to spare black can only do go back and forth with this knight he has to cover this pawn and meanwhile Carlson made some nice knight maneuvers. Now hitting this pawn, pinning the king as well. So now he's threatening because, as you can see, we're covering g5 and f5. So it takes the king a while to attack white's h pawn. And while you do that, the knight can actually go and grab this pawn. So the path is clear for the white king to walk over to the king side, queen side. So knight b7, the king starts walking. So the king is the walking that's just what i'll do knight g3 and you can't win the pawn because h5 and you're not in time here two pass pawns which you can't deal with and this sealed the deal carlson was the 2017 blitz world champion let's see the standings before the last round and can you believe it uh Karakin even lost, so Carlsen is leading before the last round with two points. He started off nine rounds before this. He was two points behind the leaders and one and a half points behind, you know, world class players. And now he's leading with two whole points with a round to spare. So he's winning no matter what. So the last round came uh, Aronian had to white against Carlsen, and this game, of course, meant nothing to Carlsen. And we had. Uh, Queen's Gambit declined and we'll just go over this rather quickly because it was a little bit surprising because I thought Aronian having uh, he, he also had a great second day uh, and he offered a draw to Queen C2 and the draw was agreed so that surprised me a little bit that um, Aronian wasn't more ambitious in this last round um, I mean he has some nice wins against Carlsen so one would thought he had more ambition, but okay, he settled on a draw. And let's see the final standings. So these were the final standings. Magnus Carlsen won with 16 points out of 21. And absolutely running riot on day two with nine points out of 10. Amazing stuff from the world champion. And on the podium, Sergei Karakin and a shout out to the 48 year old Viswanathan Anand who became rapid world champion and is on the podium in the blitz as well very impressive he lost only one game for the duration of uh, the tournament actually 38 games he lost only one so a nice achievement by him and okay Levin Ronian is, is fifth and gets a nice sum of money I assume but I was surprised he didn't go for a podium place in the last round but this video is about the world champion, so let's not focus on that. 
uh, congratulations to Magnus. He was very happy with this result. And what an exciting tournament. This was so much fun to watch. And this is just has to be my favorite event. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, wow, I put a lot of work into this video. So uh, I hope you appreciate it. And, and, you know, it was of some benefit to you. And see you later. Bye-bye.